All right, guys, we are going to be cooking uh, salmon now. And what we'll do is, the way I like my salmon is, I usually put some, I'm going to do it two ways to kind of give you all a little variety. The first one I like to do is just straight uh, teriyaki, the same one we did the uh, steak with, the very, very teriyaki. And um, the second part we're going to do is uh, we're going to put a little bit of lime juice, we're going to spray a little bit of the olive oil that we used to uh, spray the formula grill with. And we're going to use a little bit of uh, dill weed. So, scrub a life. Okay. And, all right. So, let's pour a little bit of uh, teriyaki on there. Okay, we're good. I'm going to do this all at once so I don't get my hands all dirty. A little bit of lime juice on this one here. Put, on, let's put our pepper first. Let me our dill weed. Good, and uh, you flip this over. Yeah, I love this stuff. This stuff is good for salmon and for our fish. Spray that. These salmon uh, turn out really well in the Tupperware too. Yeah, yeah. All right, so we're good to go. So let's uh, spray our foreman grill. Let me go ahead and spread this around a little bit. Okay, all right, nice and seasoned. <laughs> get a marinade. Yeah, get a marinade, right? So let's uh, throw it on there. Yeah. Okay. All right. So, Done. Um, other fish which uh, I really love in here is tuna. Uh, this is uh, like like the salmon. It's a little more pricey, but um, I, I think it's worth it because if you have something like this, and it really adds a lot of variety yep. uh, to the you know, the zero will power eating system, it makes it you know a lot more likely you'll stick to it. So you know, pretty much exact same thing. Olive oil, Oops. and the dill. A little too much. It's all right. And same thing on the other side. And just shake it on. Yeah, you like oh. a lot of dill weed on yours. <laughs> <laughs> same thing. Just rub that around. There you go. Yeah, good Whatever. thing about fish is it cooks fast. I mean, you think chicken and beef cooks fast. I mean, on the Foreman Grill, it cooks really fast. Yeah. So, and, uh, especially, I mean, um, I like I like my salmon like medium, medium rare. Mm -hmm. So, if, if you if you like it like not well done, then you can just cook it like super fast. Yeah, and it's it's almost done already. I mean, I'm probably leaving it on there for another another thirty seconds, and we're we're good. So. So um, actually, uh, one, one thing that we're not showing, uh, but which can be a good low-cost alternative, is uh, tilapia. Yeah. Uh, can you talk about that? Like how uh, how do you eat that? Uh, yeah, tilapia is actually really really good, and it's actually what I found to be the cheapest out of all fish, uh, besides and actually the leanest and the cheapest out of all fish. Um, tilapia, it's uh, low in fats, low in calories, and you can find it for about uh, last time I found it for two, well, it was about two thirty-nine a okay. pound. And again, I bought a massive amount. I actually bought, uh, like, no exaggeration, I bought 20, about 200 bucks worth. Wow. Yeah. So do the math. It's about 80, 80 pounds, about 100 pounds. And actually, of, uh, um, tilapia. Uh, we were eating uh, before we ran out. We, we, we've been eating tilapia <laughs> for the past uh, about what three, four days? Yeah. Oh, maybe about three days. And it's good. It's, it's good because, um, like, even if, if you don't put any seasoning on it, uh, you can put basically whatever seasoning you want on the tilapia. It's going to taste good. In person, I just uh, chose tilapia because it's cheap. <laughs> so, salmon and uh, tuna is really good too, but uh, you know, tastes pretty close. And uh, the amount of food that I eat, I'd rather keep it cheap and good. <laughs> so, I mean, if if you really want to do this on a budget, uh, probably the way to do it is you know, chicken breast as a staple as always. Um, you know, ground beef and uh, tilapia, and that's like three three good proteins which are going to be super cheap. All right, look at that. 
Good stuff. Let's lay this out in our uh, buffet line. <laughs> and uh, y'all yeah, probably can't catch it on the camera, but on break, uh, Dan put down one of those uh, <laughs> one of the meat loaves. No, no, <laughs> yeah, and I uh, and I scarfed down a, a steak. Yeah, I'm definitely gonna start making that meat loaf more often. Yeah. <laughs> So, so let's talk about uh, uh, if a guy had a little bit more money, um, he could probably like do more like salmon, more tuna, um, high yeah. quality beef. Yeah, definitely, definitely. It just uh, really just depends on your taste buds, and uh, um, yeah, some people like salmon, some people like uh, the tunas. Um, you know, tilapia is good too. It just really depends on what you like. Yeah. I actually know um, a friend who's uh, you know has like even uh, a little bit more to spend. What he does is he hires somebody to prepare all this food for him. And really, yeah. this is only like two hours of work, so it's yeah. not actually that much money. Yeah. I think he pays them like. Uh, like 30 or 40 bucks. Yeah, not um, too bad. Yeah. So, I mean, if, if, you, if you don't want to do any work and you have a little bit more to spend, you can do that. Yeah, and make them wash the dishes too. <laughs> <laughs> and really, the good part about this is, you know, because it's like zero skill cooking, you don't have to hire a professional chef. Yeah. Uh, you know, you can hire, you know, basically anybody and they can cook this just as well as, you know, you could. Yeah, just tell them, you know, you want this for that and this for that and that's it. Yeah. So, definitely. All right, let's see. Wow. It's unbelievable. It's almost it's almost done already. Yeah. So after this, we can also um, we'll have the pork. Um, I find that is uh, it, it, it's kind of similar to the chicken, but I like it because you know um, when you're when you're doing this like for months and months at a time, and you yeah. just need any kind of variety that you can. Yeah. And um, one thing I, I I do to to keep it um, to to keep it different is sometimes when I stick with the same proteins. Um, I use different sauces, uh, yeah. different sauces to kind of spice it up, and uh, and a lot of times I may cook uh, I may cook chicken breast one way uh, one week and cook the same chicken breast but another uh, another way. So kind of just change it up and uh, kind of see how you like it. Yeah. I so. know. Um, I, I think I do this a little different than you. Uh, one thing which I almost always do is uh, I will like cut the meat up and like mash everything together, usually without rice, and then I like put whatever <laughs> sauce on there. Um, and that actually, it takes zero willpower to the next level because I don't like to cut food. <laughs> I'm actually, my laziness is actually there you go. Where I don't like to cut my food. I just like it, you know, uh, bite size. So you know, that way you can just scoop it in. Yeah, that's uh, that's a that's a good way. I've done that before. Um, sometimes on sometimes on the ground beef, what I do is I go ahead and just uh, mix it in with the rice. So this way, you don't have to, uh, like I said, cut. I mean, yeah. you just literally have a fork or a spoon, and you just scoop into your mouth, and that's it. <laughs> And I know, I know you do sometimes. I mean, I, I do like to do it sometimes that way too, where you have the whole piece of meat, and then you eat the meat separately from the rice and the vegetables. Yeah, and uh, yeah, we're good. Nice. Now let's use. Uh... Actually, there we go. That looks really good. I love tuna personally, so I'm looking forward to those. In. So, Mike, when you're cooking the fish, um, do you ever have a problem with it falling apart on the on the forming? Um, actually, with tilapia, that's uh, that's something I run into a lot of times. Yeah. Um, and it's only because it's only because um, usually when I'm cooking the same meats, I don't really uh, wash it in between. Yeah. And uh, today, of course, uh, we wash the form uh, before every uh, before every meat. But when you cook the same one, a lot of times uh, it leaves a little bit of film on the on the uh, form and grill after every one, and it starts to stick afterwards. Yeah. Um, but what I found is just like how we made the uh, the meatloaf a little earlier. Uh, really, it's you're still measuring the amount of portions. You're still looking at the portions, so it doesn't have really have to stay in one piece. Just as long as uh, you get a certain amount, um, you know, into the into the tubware, so, you know, you'll you'll be fine. So not just usually go ahead and scrape it off the form in and. If it's a whole big pile of uh, tilapia. Some are full pieces and some are all broken. Yeah, and so. if I have it, it doesn't really matter. <laughs> yeah, I saw it in Tupperware style. Some of it's broken and it's no big deal. I mean, all the portions are about the same size, you know, yeah, exactly. off by a little bit, no big deal. Okay, so uh, that's how you cook fish. There you go.